In this video, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of driving in Spain. Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. It is so easy to go about a wonderful road trip in Spain. To make your life even easier, we have put together a series of recommendations. So if you're ready, let's hit the road. We are aware that, depending on your country of origin, you will be familiar with some or most recommendations, which is good news, as it means you are more than ready to drive in Spain. It is true that a substantial part of the advice we give here can be applied to driving in any country on Earth. So let's get started. Do get familiar with the decimal system. Like the rest of Europe, Spain uses the decimal system. What that means is that distances and speeds are expressed in kilometers and kilometers per hour rather than miles and miles per hour. At the service station, you will fill your tank by the liter and not by the gallon. Do stay on the right. Yes, in Spain we drive on the right-hand side of the road. It will be obvious to many people, but this is a bit of knowledge you cannot take for granted. Don't turn on red. The concept of turning right on a red light, common in countries like the United States, does not exist at all in Spain, where red means red. Never go through a red light. In the vast majority of junctions, you will simply see a red traffic light. However, there are cases when a separate light allows for cars on the right lane to advance, but it will be a green light or a blinking light. Do keep your tank full. This piece of advice is particularly relevant if you are going off the beaten track. Always make sure you keep your tank full. You never know how far you will have to drive till the next service station. If you plan on driving along a motorway, be aware that the distance between service stations can be considerable, sometimes 40 kilometers or more. Be familiar with the types of gas, petrol, in Spain. On service stations in Spain, called gasolineras or estaciones de servicio, you will find mainly three types of gas. Simplomo 95, which is equivalent to regular unleaded. Simplomo 98, equivalent to premium unleaded. Y gasoleo, gasoil or diesel, which is the Spanish term for diesel. If you are driving your own car, you will know which type of gas to use. But if you are on a rented car, it's common practice to have a sticker on the inside of the tank lid, and the sticker shows the type of gas you should use. The way you go about filling your tank changes from one station to another. In most service stations, you will fill your tank first and then enter the store to pay for the amount of gas you have used. In a small number of stations, however, there is someone in charge who will appear to fill your tank as soon as you park your car. Don't drink and drive. Breath alcohol tests are common. Drink driving laws in Spain are strict and the penalties include heavy fines, the loss of your license and even imprisonment. If you are involved in an accident while driving drunk, you will be in serious trouble. The actual blood alcohol level allowed by law is slightly above 0.5 grams per liter in the bloodstream, but our advice is quite simple. Avoid all risks by not drinking at all if you are driving. Never mind the chances of a serious encounter with the law. The most important reason why you shouldn't drink and drive is that it is dangerous for you, for the people traveling with you and for anyone else on the same road as you are. Do get familiar with the types of roads. To help you understand the types of roads you can find in Spain, we have an entire video on this channel. The link should appear on the top right corner of the screen right now. Don't miss it. The good news is that the majority of roads in Spain are free to use. 
do you know when to use autovías? Still on the issue of types of roads. While autovías, which are free motorways, are great to take you fast and cheap from A to B, they are not that great when it comes to road trips as they won't take you through villages or allow for wonderful discoveries along the way. On our road trips, we tend to avoid autovias unless they are absolutely essential along the trip. National and country roads are much more fun. And while it is true that traffic tends to be much heavier on national roads and driving behind a lorry can be painful, it is national and country roads that lead to the most wonderful discoveries do find out what the speed limits are. While there are exceptions to the general rule, the most common speed limits in Spain are 120 km per hour on motorways, autopistas or autovías, 90 km per hour on conventional roads, which can be carreteras nacionales, autonómicas or comarcales, and 50 km per hour in cities. However, there's been a recent move towards slower speeds and in a substantial number of single lane streets, the speed limit today is 30 km per hour or even less. The rules and its exceptions are complex, so always pay attention to the speed limits and make sure you do not exceed them. Just because, say, the maximum speed limit on an autovia is 120, it doesn't mean you cannot find a stretch of road where the limit drops drastically. Do check out for speed traps. The truth is that if you stick to the speed limits, there isn't much reason for concern regarding speed traps, which in Spanish are known as radares de velocidad. But in any case, be aware there are many types of speed traps. On highways, they might be found well above your head, well identified as in the image. Speed trap right where the panel is. But they might be much smaller and hidden, as in the images we are showing you now, right at the entrance of a small village where the speed limit drops substantially. The speed trap is the gray box on the right. There is also a more modern type of radar, known as radar de tramo, which is an average speed measuring speed camera. Do you see the little watch along the car on the panel above? It means there is a radar de tramo in operation. They operate as two separate sets of cameras, at a distance from one another, that control your average speed along a stretch of road. Speed cameras can also be found on unmarked police cars or even on board helicopters. Yes, you could be fined for speeding from a helicopter without you even noticing. Do wear your seat belt. Whether you're sitting on the front or the back seats, always wear your seat belts. Always. Do drive safely around cyclists. Cyclists are a very common sight on many Spanish roads, and cyclist safety is a huge issue in this country. Very often, it's people practicing a very popular sport in Spain. The number of cyclists killed in traffic accidents is alarmingly high, and the highway code has been changed several times in recent years to introduce new provisions to protect cyclists. Before you overtake a cyclist or group of cyclists, make sure you can keep a distance between your car and the cyclist closest to you of at least 1.5 meters. On top of that, the maximum speed at which you can overtake a cyclist is 20 km per hour inferior to the maximum speed allowed on the road where you are driving. So, if the maximum speed is 90 km per hour, you cannot overtake a cyclist at more than 70 km per hour. Don't use a phone while driving. Law enforcement agents do not take it kindly to people using their mobile phones while driving. It's a certain fine and could have worse consequences if you are involved in an accident while holding your phone. Do learn how to navigate roundabouts. 
rotondas, which is the Spanish word for roundabouts or traffic circles, are such a common feature of the Spanish landscape that you should be familiar with them. There is even an ongoing joke that describes Spain as a roundabout nation. It is a bit of an exaggeration as roundabouts are quite common in other European countries too, but there you go. There are mainly two types of rotondas. The easy ones are those where several sets of traffic lights decide who can go and who has to wait. You just follow the traffic lights. Now, the difficult ones are the pure roundabouts where the preference is not decided by a set of traffic lights but by the highway code and the rule is quite simple whoever has joined the roundabout has preference over those waiting to join the roundabout so if you are about to join a roundabout and there's a car coming from your left you should let him go before you join the roundabout once you are in, you are king, and other cars willing to join the roundabout should wait for you. To leave the roundabout, make sure you take the right lane and use your indicators to show your intention of leaving the roundabout. Do use indicators. The majority of Spanish drivers use indicators every time they take a turn or even move lane along a motorway, and you should do that too. Also use them, as we have just mentioned, before you leave a roundabout. It's quite funny because you could be overtaken at 180 km per hour, way above the maximum speed limit, and the driver will use the indicator when he begins to overtake you and once he finishes overtaking too. Do avoid bank holidays. Spaniards are particularly fond of short breaks, and bank holidays are notorious for traffic jams and huge crowds across tourist destinations all throughout the country. Bank holidays are the times when the inhabitants of the large cities take to the road to visit smaller destinations in nearby regions. Do look after your kids. According to Spanish law, children under 135 centimeters in height must not sit in the front seat and must use a restraint system. If you are traveling with children, make sure you use the correct car seats. Do pay your fines on the spot. God forbid you receive a fine while driving in Spain. But if that happens and you pay the fine on the spot, you should know it comes with a 50% discount. And the same 50% discount applies if you pay the fine within 20 calendar days. Do pick the right vehicle for your trip. Unless your budget is unlimited, you should know that even the most compact model of car will do the trick. Sure, if you are thinking of coming to Spain during summer, we strongly advise you to rent a car equipped with air conditioning. But other than that, there are no other specific requirements you should be aware of. And no, you do not need a four-wheel drive for a road trip in Spain. Don't pull over just anywhere to take a picture. We have seen this scene too often, in particular on small country roads. As soon as a great photo opportunity appears, the driver stops the car in the middle of the road regardless of incoming traffic. Don't do that. You are going to piss a lot of people off and even worse, you can cause an accident. On top of that, be aware that if you stop by the side of a highway, you must wear a fluorescent jacket. All Spanish cars are equipped with one. If you don't put the jacket on and a police car drives by, you will be fined. Do respect pedestrian crossings. Pedestrian crossings, known in Spanish as pasos de peatones or pasos de febra, are to be respected. The understanding for most Spanish pedestrians is that they have the absolute right of way while on a pedestrian crossing, and they are definitely right. Not stopping at a pedestrian crossing is a serious offense and can cause a very serious accident. Don't park your vehicle any old how. While parking on remote areas doesn't usually pose much of a challenge, the same cannot be said of cities where parking is no mean task and there are multiple rules and regulations. 
We have published a video, Parking in Spain, full of tips and information on the issue. You should see the link on the upper right corner of the screen right now. And that was our collection of advice for you planning a road trip in Spain. We hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to use the commentary box below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and if you're new to the channel, take the opportunity to subscribe using the button that should appear on the screen. We'll see you soon on another video with tips for a road trip in Spain or Portugal. Até mais, hasta la próxima, see you soon.